Hello friends, you're welcome to the Search the Scripture lesson. Always a time of refreshment when we go through, we search through the Word of God, the Scriptures. It's a blessing and I pray as we still continue to search that the Lord will continue to reveal deep things more and more. Let's say a word of prayer while we begin. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your greatness, for all you've been doing for us, how you've been helping us, guiding us through your word. Lord, we pray once again, we are here to study at your feet, to search the scripture. Lord, I pray, open our eyes of our understanding that we may behold wonderful things, precious things out of your word. Bless us, elevate us, uplift us, through your word in jesus name in jesus name we pray amen god bless you um we are looking at a very wonderful like i always call it every study it's it's wonderful so today it's still a very wonderful study from the book of genesis we're still on the series on the book of Genesis and um, God has helped us we've been going from chapters to chapters and chapters to chapters and now we are in chapter 40 and we are looking at chapter 40 and chapter 41 of the book of Genesis um, our text from Genesis chapter 40 verse 1 says and it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord the king of egypt and pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers and he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison the place where joseph was bound and the captain of the guard charged joseph with them and he served them and they continued a season in war joseph had been in the prison for an offense he didn't commit but while in the prison his character shone he carried out his prison duties with distinguished faithfulness adversity could not break his character Adversity could not break his spirit or change his character. In him was fulfilled the scripture. The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that had clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. Because of that, the prison keeper made him the chief prisoner. He was in charge of the welfare and the care of his inmates. And joseph stood out if you noticed the life of joseph he had always been um the instructor the supervisor wherever he finds himself from his father's house he had been the one going up to check on his brethren to bring reports to his father in potiphar's house he was the one in charge of everything both in the house and in the field he was in charge of everything and he was cast into the prison for the offense he didn't commit and when he got to the prison the prison keeper also made him the chief prisoner that because he had an excellent spirit god was with him he was faithful standing out and i pray your life will shine forth your character will continue to stand, shine forth, that anywhere you find yourself, anywhere you find yourself, they will see the light of God in your life. In adversity, in trials, the light of God will continue to, continue to shine in your life in Jesus' name. We are looking at this um, topic on that three subheading, point one, which is Joseph interprets co-prisoners dreams joseph interprets co-prisoners dreams 
Our text is taken from Genesis chapter 40. I read from verse 1. It says, And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them. And he served them and they continued a season in word. Joseph and the butler and the baker, they were in the same cell, same prison. Joseph was the, the chief prisoner taking care of his inmates, their welfare, their well-being. And Joseph was a wonderful person, a very wonderful person, that he was so concerned, he was observant, and he saw, he saw his inmates, the baker and the buckler. They had dreams. They had their dreams in the night, and they woke up and they were sad. They were sad because they understood not the dream. They could not interpret their dreams. They were so sad. And in verse 6, And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked upon them. And behold, they were sad. He looked upon them. Are you a pastor? Do you observe your congregation? Are you a zonal leader, a youth pastor, a youth leader? A woman leader, women leader, do you observe the people under you? Those the Lord have committed into your hands to take care of, like the, like the, the keep the prison keeper um, committed the inmates, the welfare of the inmates into the hands of Joseph. The Lord has committed those converts into your hands. Are you observant? Do you look to their faces? Do you inquire what is the problem? I've not been seeing you. Hope everything is fine. Joseph looked upon them in verse 7 and he says, And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? Wherefore look ye so sadly today? You married. And you wake up and you see your husband sad. Do you ask the question, why are you so why are you looking sadly today? Do you ask your husband that? Do you ask your youth? You notice um, one of them has have been um, sad, moody. Do you go to them and make inquiries? What is the problem? Hope everything is fine. Do you call? Do you text? Do you check on them to know how they are doing? And he says, and they said, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretation belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Tell me, I pray you. Tell me. You can come to them humbly, meekly softly and they will open up some people it might be difficult for you to really hear from some but when you come prayerfully you come to them you come in a loving manner you speak to them softly in a loving and a caring manner they tend to open up and he said what is the problem i might not be able to solve it but i know there is the Almighty there, Almighty God up there that can solve your problem. And that's what Joseph said. He said, do not interpretation belong to God. Tell me, I pray you. And they said, and the butler narrated his dreams to Joseph. And Joseph gave the interpretation in verse 12. 
And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head and restore thee unto the place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand. After this former manner, when thou wast his butler, but think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house, for indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me in the dungeon. The experience reminds us that the goodness may be concerned to unpleasant circumstances. For example, considering the clear evidence of Joseph's integrity and moral uprightness, there was no justification for his incarceration. Verse 16, um, when the baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uttermost baskets there was all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from thee. Joseph was um, honest. Sometimes we try to cover it up. He gave the interpretation to the butler about his restoration. And it came to the turn of the baker. Why? Because he, the baker heard the interpretation of the dream of the butler by Joseph. And he wanted to hear his own interpretation of his dream. And Joseph didn't try to paint words. This, this is it. This is the interpretation of the dream. Preachers, we need to learn how to speak the word. Um, tell the people the truth. Tell them that, yes, this is what the word is saying. This is what the Bible is saying. But the wages of sin is death. This is what it's saying. If you continue in this way, in this your way, it will lead to doom, destruction, hell. Speak the word to them and tell them about the love of Christ, the way of escape. Tell them. Joseph spoke the truth to the baker. Three days, your head will be lifted up thee, and you'll be hanged. So likewise, we should speak to the sinners. Tell them the truth. But tell them in love. Tell them the consequences of their actions. Tell them where it will lead to. Tell them what awaits them and the life beyond. Tell them. And the Holy Spirit will take over from there, convict their hearts, and they will be saved. And all glory will be unto the God of all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's move to the next point. The next point, which is Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream come to the text genesis chapter 41 i read from verse 1 and it came to pass at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamed and behold pharaoh had a dream he dreamed the dream two different dreams with same interpretation and he said he was confused he was troubled. 
he didn't understand what those dreams the dreams were all about he didn't understand and he called on the magicians the astrologers he called on them the egyptian magicians and he gave them the dream he narrated the dream to them they were not able to decode the details of the dream they could not years after joseph interpreted the dreams of the baker and the butler remember chapter 40 ended with yet did not the chief butler remember joseph but he forgot him he didn't remember he didn't remember joseph sometimes god orchestrates things to go for his purpose it might be he didn't remember maybe for just this purpose I don't know but God works in the way in ways that we don't really understand so at the right time at the right time Pharaoh had the dream he had the dream that no one in Egypt could interpret only Joseph only Joseph the Lord will place you in a position where you're the only solution you're the only one that knows the way out the only one that knows how to solve that problem and i pray the lord will help us the lord will equip us the lord will train us the lord will develop us the lord will edify us more and more and get us prepared for that purpose for that time that when it comes will be effective in it in the name of jesus and the bible said he was troubled he was troubled in verse 8 and it came to pass that in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians after he had the dream he had the dreams two dreams he was troubled he was troubled the lord will trouble your help and wherever they are those that the lord have assigned to lift you up their heart will be troubled till they find you and he was troubled let's come to Esther. you remember king ahasuerus the bible said he could not sleep <laughs> he could not sleep and he ordered them to bring the book of records in esther chapter 6 verse 1 on that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king he was troubled he could not sleep come back to our text and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of egypt and all the wise men thereof and Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my fault this day. I do remember my fault this day. Verse 12. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream he did interpret and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto my office and him he hanged verse 14 then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. They will bring you out hastily. Hastily out. Hastily out of the dungeon. Your time from all those adversity, trials, hastily you're taken out in the name of Jesus. He says, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. Hastily out 
of the dungeon. Come to Proverbs 18 verse 16. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. A man's gift. Joseph, an interpreter. That was his gift. A man's gift maketh room for him and does what? And bringeth him before great men. Hastily they brought him out of the dungeon. Hastily. Hastily. Out of the dungeon. Out of the dungeon. The Lord will lift you up. I speak into your life today that the Lord will lift you up. Take you away from that adversity. He will bear you in eagle's wings. And he will take you high. Above every trials, above every adversity, above every roadblock, every barricade that wants to stop you from hitting or reaching your destiny or reaching your destination, the Lord will lift you high. You will fly above it in the name of Jesus. Hastily, they took him out of the dungeon. And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed the dream and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Joseph answered Pharaoh humbly. The humility was obvious. He said, it is not of me. It is not in me. It is not mine. Maybe the Lord has been using you greatly. The Lord has been using you to do exploits. We should recognize that it is not in you, not in me. It's the grace of God. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. The grace of God. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, it is not in me. No, I don't take the glory. I don't take the glory. It's of God. He says, for God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh began to narrate his dreams to Joseph. He was narrating the dreams. And at the end of his narration, Joseph said to him, in verse 25, and Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God had showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. Seven years of bountifulness and also seven years of famine. He gave Pharaoh the perfect interpretation. And that, that interpretation wowed Pharaoh. Pharaoh and his servants, they were dumbfounded. Like, we've, we've gone round Egypt looking for those, the magician, the wise men, could not even decode this and you you give the perfect interpretation and Joseph didn't stop there Joseph went ahead to advise Pharaoh on what to do on what to do to deliver himself and the people of Egypt and also the countries around them do you just preach the word do you just tell the people hell awaits them? Do you tell the sinners that if you die, you go to hell? And you don't tell them the way out. 
the dream he gave them the perfect dream but he came up and he said this is what pharaoh should do and you should always tell them there is a way out this is what you should do believe in christ jesus has paid it all for you repent and be ye converted repent turn away from your old ways tell them about jesus tell them that he came to pay the price for them and they will turn pharaoh said to joseph said to pharaoh behold there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of egypt and there shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of egypt and the famine shall consume the land and the plenty shall not be known in the land by the reason of that famine following for it shall be very grievous there is a great day coming the great tribulation is coming it's coming like Pharaoh's, like Joseph said to Pharaoh, seven years of plenty. There's all these seven years of the great tribulation. Seven years. The great tribulation will last for seven years. Where there will be tears, crying, wailing. Darkness of the sun. Darkness of the moon. Seven years. Have you do you tell sinners? Do you tell them? Do you go out and preach the gospel? It will be grievous. On that day, it will be grievous. Like Joseph said to Pharaoh, the seven years of famine will be grievous. And I'm saying to you, say to them, the seven years of the great tribulation will be grievous. I pray you will not be there. You will not be left behind. That is why he has sent us out to go and preach the gospel. He says, lift up your eyes and look. For they are white. They are white. And they are ready to be harvested. They are white. In John chapter 4 verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the field, for they are white, ready to harvest, ready to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that sow it and he that reap it may rejoice together reap it gathering unto life eternal gathering unto life eternal the lord is calling you so that you can go forth and tell them about the great tribulation the time of distress jacob's trouble that is coming up Tell them so they will be ready for the rapture. Tell your friends, tell your families, tell the neighbors so they will be ready for the rapture. It will be grievous. It will what? Be grievous. And I pray the Lord will help us to remain steadfast, will be wise, visionaries like Joseph that can see the future through the word of God and act on it act prepared act abstain from anything that will make us miss it and the lord will help us by his grace that will be ready that whether death or rapture will make it on that day in the name of jesus let's move to the next point the next point which is joseph's elevation leadership and success joseph's elevation leadership and success come to the text genesis chapter 41 i read from verse 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of god is 
in the language of Pharaoh, no man was better qualified for the job than the man God had given the insight. God's fashioned men are always better men. Always better men. Be it Moses, Joshua, Daniel, Paul, Peter. Look at what um, Nebuchadnezzar said about um, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 1, verse 19. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Misha, Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. All his realm. Ten, ten times better. Ten times better. Because you have the Spirit of God. The Lord will continue to prepare you. The Lord will continue to equip you. The Lord will continue to help you. He will grant you wisdom, understanding. He will teach you. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. The way you act, the way you compose yourself, the way you speak, everything about you. And you'll become ten times better than those, than those around you. And I pray the Lord will help us. That he will keep on lifting us. And we keep on working with him, learning from him. To be better and better in Jesus' name. Joseph was elevated. Elevated to become what? The second ruler. The second ruler comes to our text in verse 40. Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And verse 49, And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. For it was what? Without number. He was gathering. He was working, laboring. He, he, he employed a lot of people, smart people. They were laboring, laboring, and laboring. They were gathering corn, gathering corn. Don't waste it. They were gathering corn. Look what? To the field. He said, for they are white, ready to harvest. Go out. Preach the word. They are white, ready to harvest. Go out. Preach the word. Keep gathering. Keep gathering. Gather them to life eternal. Keep gathering. Keep gathering until we lose numbers keep gathering the kingdom of god is large enough to contain every soul keep gathering don't say i've won enough so i'm tired no keep gathering you have those ahead of you that that that, that preach the gospel and they won lots of souls and they kept on going till death called them up keep gathering keep going forth Preach the word. Keep gathering. Joseph kept on gathering until he lost count. They lost count. They lost count. They lost count. I pray the Lord will give us the strength, the wisdom, the grace to preach the word, to win souls. Holy Spirit will enable us to go forth and win souls for the kingdom in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. How you've spoken to us. I know you've spoken directly to each and every one of us. Lord, we've looked at the life of Joseph. How he was hastily brought out from the dungeon. And he was placed in the palace. Even Pharaoh gave him his ring of authority. Lord, you've given us authority. Authority, your word, you gave us power. To trample upon serpents and scorpions. Lord, give us the wisdom to keep on going, living in authority, walking in authority, walking in dominion. And also, Lord, 
to be visionary like Joseph, to know what is our weight that is coming ahead, to see the future through your word. Help us to act like Joseph acted. Help us to win souls. There are seven years of famine in the time of Joseph. And Lord, we know seven years of the great tribulation coming. And Lord, I don't want to be there. They don't want to be there. Help us that will speak the word effectively and they will turn away. Lord, I pray, uplift us. Take us higher, to higher ground. Lift us up in the name of Jesus. I thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Bye.